Codega is a guide and a storyteller, escorting you through the night, lighting the way, warding off thieves, ghosts, demons, and other oddities. Along the journey, his companions would often share with him the most curious of stories that he'd record in his codex. Perhaps you just might find yourself traveling with the Codega and sharing one of yours. Click that like. Yeah. If you're new here, subscribe and have the bell hit for notifications to stay up to date on all the new content. There are some instances and encounters where when people have had encounters, even with a Sasquatch, where their their electronic devices go completely dead. Okay. So I think that's what happened. But uh, so as soon as my van died, mm -hmm. I had this bad feeling and, and like a terrible feeling. And I had the image of a werewolf popped in my head and I got freaked out. So at the time, I just lost my home uh, due to the pandemic. Okay. Um, I, lost, I, I lost my home. I lost my business, lost everything. Me and my dog were living in my van. Hmm. And so I get out of the car. So right before I get out of the van, I grab my sword. And if I didn't mention, I am, I am a high ranking ninjutsu practitioner. We are weapons experts. Okay. Um, um, we rely a lot on um, a weapon called the ninja toe, which is a, uh, which is a straight version of a, a uh, katana of a sword. Okay. So I, I grabbed the sword because I was freaking out because the image of the werewolf would not get out of my head and I couldn't shake it. So I grabbed my sword, get out of the car, pop the hood, and I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with the van. And um, I'm messing with some wires, shaking this, shaking that. And then I stop and I close the lid. Right before I closed the lid, I felt something was on the other side of the van. I could sense something there. As soon as I stepped around, there was... Now, here's the truth. You, you hear stories of, of people explaining what these animals look like and stories of them being super tall, eight, nine feet tall, uh, built like a bodybuilder. The ones I've seen have never looked like that. And most of them were not that tall except for a couple of them were over seven feet tall. But all, all the other encounters I've had, they were five and a half, six feet tall. Ma barely, barely six feet tall. But so I come around and there is this, this dog man standing there and it's slightly hunched. And I freaked. So um, it slams its hand or slammed on the on the window of my van, I took that as an aggressive thing and I attacked it. I cut it. Really? Really? I, on the blood of Christ, I almost cut its arm off. Okay. So Let's... I, it's my training. I have been trained to react quickly when working with a weapon like that. We're at the same time that our brain is working, we're in physical motion at the very same time. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's uh, th that's really interesting. And uh, and 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 so, I'm assuming that was if was that on the passenger side, and so it was, was on, on the, the driver's side. Driver's side. So it was driver's possibly its right side. right arm then that you had. Uh, like was that was it the right arm that was beating on the on on or paw or whatever you want to call it's it. right arm would have been beating. So I cut his left arm. Oh, okay. Okay. What happened at that point? Well, right. Okay. People need to realize these things. These are, they are merely just an animal. What no, every animal, it's number one interest in itself is protecting itself and keeping itself alive. 
so as soon as the attack happened, it ran, it retreated, it, it grabbed its arm and it retreated. And I jumped in the van, the van still wouldn't start. So I was stuck there until um, the tow truck came out. Okay. Yeah. So that's what happened there. Okay. Well, it's really interesting. Now I have a question though. So you said they're yeah. just an animal though, but if they're able to affect electronics, are, are they just an animal at that point then? Well, here's the thing. Everything on the planet, everything that is alive and that has a soul, animals have souls. I 100% I stand by that. But everything can be influenced demonically. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay. Demons and, and spirits or, or, or what the Bible refers to as unclean spirits can affect the lights around you, can affect... They can affect anything that 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 you're around. Okay, okay, that that makes sense. I, I understand where you're coming from on that part. Uh, saying that, you know, it's it's a it's a spiritual warfare almost kind of thing that's going on. And every uh, day is, is we are in a spiritual, but we are engaged in war on a daily basis. Every second, every hour, every minute, we're engaged. Okay, I I I I can. I can relate to that. I understand where you're coming from by saying that. Um, and, and that's that's really interesting as well. Okay. So now, let's... Uh, yeah, now, go ahead. What I, now, what I just told you guys, I I didn't even... That's not even in the book. Oh, really? Okay. Now, so, why did you leave that one out of the book, if you don't mind me asking? Because not everybody... When they read something like that, they're mm -hmm. they're going to shut it down as as a story because they're mm -hmm. misinformed and they don't understand these things yet. Okay. So, I leave certain things out, certain details out, so it still keeps them engaged, so they get through the whole book and learn important things and learn information that that they didn't have before. Okay. My whole job in life is to help keep people safe, and, and I take it very serious. Because you you want to inform these people, you want to um, you know let them have a uh, like we say, knowledge is power, you know, and, and that's what your your that is your goal, right? Correct. Yes, is to get people out of the matrix, basically. <laughs> right now, that, a lot of people are stuck, even yes. I was. but I can proudly one hundred percent say I am out of the matrix. I know. Yeah. If the matrix, I, I the matrix that. has you, right? Yes, that that's not uh, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that, that, that's what I mean. I, I mean, just in general, that that statement, you know, it seems to be. Um, There's a lot be... of truth to the matrix. Mm -hmm. There yes. really is. Yep, there is. I, I've always said that. I said a lot of times that you know Hollywood is revealing a lot of truth. You know, and of course, they're called and, somebody... Those every movie that you see with with a monster or witchcraft or anything. Mm -hmm. are called soft disclosures that's yep. what they are that that is what i tell my listeners and viewers all the time i tell them that you know watch these movies there is truth in plain sight it is soft disclosure especially like like even in kids movies which is kind of oh, yeah. you know like we, we talk about monster zinc i bring up monster zinc often where you know these monsters come out they scare people to get energy you know th yes. th that is what their power is and i'm like not only is it that yes you are you 100 percent have a correct point there but here is another one that i'm going to add and you may carry you because i like you um you can have this one okay not only are you correct about them feeding off the energy but there's something in fear that changes the texture and something is released into your bloodstream that's why mm. there are a lot of missing children because they get yep. devoured by these creatures so when they when they get scared there's something in the fear that the that the that the creature needs to gain power hmm yeah i so that's I, for you. I understand and i appreciate that i i, I know exactly what you're talking about and yes yeah, so, something I, I don't like saying too loud on on the on the platform but i know exactly what you are talking about yeah it's uh it, it it's a scary thing you know and i didn't even think of that as well and i i've i've known fear is there is the fuel for a lot of these creatures and a lot of these demons as well um and, and it's and i do believe that uh knowledge is power and and having that uh 
the ability to to fight back is is very very much needed very important here is another really important piece of advice that, mm-hmm. that, that i can give when you now i've heard tons of encounters i listen to all sorts of uh, different channels out there just because it's important to know these things and to hear these 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 people out because it it's important mm-hmm. and a lot of people that have encounters and and they're armed with a firearm a lot of the times they they miss these shots the reason they miss the shots is because there is a difference between these two weapons there's now i'm not talking about any sword that you just buy off of amazon you have mm-hmm. to actually get a combat sword and you're going to spend about five thousand dollars on this weapon these swords are triple dipped triple folded and they can cut through steel like it's butter that's the kind of sword i used mm-hmm. and 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 that makes sense because uh, a friend of mine, Barton Nunley, I don't know if you know Barton Nunley, you know, he has, he himself has a couple of weapons himself. He has a sword and he has a spear, I believe, um, and, and that he won't go out without them. I don't, when I went, when I work in the field, I carry mm-hmm. my katana with me. Yeah. yeah. And I am, and I, and I have a sidearm too, but mm-hmm. that will be used at a, as a last resort because for some reason, not most of the bullets do not pierce their skin, and I can't explain it. But you'll yep. hear stories of people shooting them dead on and nothing happening. Yep. You pull out a sword. There's a person's life flashes before their eyes. There's a these weapons affect a person and and, and any type of living thing's spirit. It, there's just something about a sword that does that. Now, do you feel it, how it's made, um, like the material that's being used, or is it the blacksmith, or everything, is it the energy that connects through? Energy. Everything <laughs> in life has to do with energy. Mm-hmm. There are certain energies that will align themselves with certain things that 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 enable this certain thing to do its job. Okay. I, it, it it makes sense. It's almost like it becomes an extension of yourself. It is it what is it exactly is. Exactly who you are. I mean, I mean, your sword becomes one with you. So when as you're flowing and as you're moving, you know, it flows with you and it becomes part of you, part of your. It movement. moves exactly. If if my toe moves half an inch, that sword moves with the toe. Okay. Okay. In- interesting. And it takes a long time to. It's learning a weapon like that is not for everybody it, it's very hard weapons are hard I, I i can only imagine you know like i have no training in any weapon other than you know uh firearms um, shame on you go learn go learn go learn some some things so you can defend yourself i i and i actually think that's know. a i i do i i you never know and and i i agree with you it's not something that I, and I'm not saying, oh yeah, yeah, I'll do that, I'll do that. No, I, it's it's something I think everybody should consider. You know, some sort of everybody weapon, should know how to use training. a sword. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to learn how to use a sword because what happens when the day comes where our arms are taken from us? You're gonna need something. Yeah, yeah, our firearms are taken from us, and yeah. and and people come, might laugh at this, but if if we go back, you know, a couple hundred years, uh, a lot of people knew how to fight with swords. You know, it was it was a lot of people that knew the how to fight sword, with swords. The sword, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, is the original arm. Mm. It's mm-hmm. the original weapon of war is a sword. Interesting. That's, that's, that's what is so special and so soul-taking about a weapon like that. I, I know we're getting close to our usually uh, my interviews run for an hour, sure. but you know, we have maybe another five more minutes. Is there anything else? Uh, any other short uh, encounter you want to go through? Or, no, or but I else? have some information that, that yes. I would like to share anytime, anything that is out there. That is, it, it's very important that you guys get out there and you start reading books. Anytime you, you, you hear about fairy tales, there's truth to these t- stories. It is, don't let the word fairy tale fool you. Like the word hoax fools a lot of people. Most of the time, the, the, the 
be topics that have been deemed a hoax or truthful the whole time. The hoax is the hoax. Hmm. Th that's really interesting. And, and I, I've had a previous guest, Miss, uh, Missy, she had an experience with a pale crawler and oh, scary. Those, those guys are scary. Yes. I, and, and I watched that one. Very good interview. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. And, and so you, you know that she dove into the pale crawler picture, um, where the one that was submitted to the news and you know, it's legit. And there, there was another one submitted that they changed the timestamp. So by changing the timestamp and showing you two of the exact same pictures, but with one timestamp that has changed right there, there could be like, Oh, you know, this is doctored. And so if, if well, there's something exactly, changed on it, then exactly. it's, it's all, it's all fake. <clears throat> That's why I sent you the photos I sent you because those are all original. No one else has those, but you know. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I always forget. I always mute my mic because sometimes his background noise is crazy, but those are really interesting. Do you want to um, quickly go through those photos? I can uh, share them here. Yeah, if, we have um, time. if we're not going to do them justice, I don't you bring up the white dog, man. Okay. Yeah. I can and do that we, here right now. We can talk about that one for sure. Let's uh, right here. Okay. Right. That if you look real closely, mm -hmm. that is a hundred percent. Now, this is this is the truth, folks. I haven't spoken one lie since I was 14 years old. Okay. That's the last time I ever fibbed. But um that is a real upright canine. Uh how this photo came to be, there was a photographer that was uh, I, I don't remember what part of Canada. Okay. But he was he was in Canada doing some wildlife photography, and this guy stepped out of nowhere and, and came in to view. And at first, he didn't even realize what it was because at first it just looked like a normal wolf mm -hmm. until it started until it did that, and you can clearly see a big difference there. Yeah, yeah, but, and 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 the amount of hair on it too. You know that that's not a normal wolf. Uh, I, if you look, there are patches there where you can see I'm through here that it's that animal skin is black. Yes, 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 yes. You can see black, yeah. even under its eyes. Just scary. That yeah. is what that's what they really look like, folks. Just like you see in the movies. <laughs> again soft disclosure soft disclosure with those movies there they didn't come up with those those designs all on all on their own there's come on now come on yeah <laughs> there's no uh, way. i i agree or or those stories you know how do they come up with those stories of of werewolves and oh, you know, check this like, out. here's yeah. something you probably don't know they didn't start coming out you know the werewolf that we know and see today in film those weren't brought to to light until the 1980s. That's when I think they got a hold of, of, of the first dogman. That when they captured the first one for for military use, and then they the word got around. That's when the truth as to what they really looked like came out was in the 80s. Yeah, it's interesting. Yes, and 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 I agree with you with this uh, military. This is what I said. I said the military They're has, simple. yes, military has captured some and then genetically created their own soldiers out of them, you know, been able to somehow modify it and create their own uh, creatures is, is my belief on that. I, I believe so too. Um, I don't think quite that extent. I, mm -hmm. I think you and I should have some other conversation about this because um, I could tell that we could both benefit from it, but for sure. Most of these specimens they have are natural, okay. but, but where they mess up is anytime you introduce an animal to blood, they become dangerous. Yes. Yes, they do. And so you have these animals that you're using to, to that you're using on the battlefields in Afghanistan. That's what, that's where they send them is to mm -hmm. the Middle East. And yeah. um, so they have bloodlust, and then know what they do? Know what they know? What the the military will do with a just a just a German Shepherd that is military that was used on base? They will euthanize that animal. They don't really? euthanize now. 
they won't euthanize. Now, for most of the time, that's what I've heard, that most of them get euthanized. Some don't, okay. but a lot of them do. They will not euthanize the dogmen. They release them back into the national parks, and then that's then when missing you Then missing 411. Yes. yes, because they think that all humans are the enemy. So okay. they, yeah. There's wow. something there too. So yeah, definitely, definitely, Ryan. I, I think we'll leave this on a bit of a cliffhanger, just like we're we're talking about here. You know, especially with missing four one one and all these, uh, you know, releasing dogman back into the wild. Uh, that's really interesting. Um, now, why don't you tell our viewers and listeners where they can find you one last time, and uh, then we'll be all right. signing off. Um, um, if you would like to read the ebooks I have, they are available on Amazon.com or Amazon Kindle. Instead of telling you each book, um, all all you have to do in, under the search menu on with either Amazon Kindle or Amazon.com is type in my author name, which is Jason Corona, and the list of all of my ebooks will pop up, and you'll have those available. If you would like to connect with me social wise, so socially, you can always send me a friend request or reach out through Facebook at um ryan shelves uh, yes yes yeah i i saw that or yeah ryan shelves yeah. or send me an email at mm -hmm. dogmen dot among dot us at gmail.com reach out and um i always respond to my my emails i do not ignore anybody Okay, perfect, perfect. No, and and I appreciate that. And also, we're going to put those links all in the show notes here. So everybody, if you're looking for those books or you know looking to get a hold of uh, Ryan, you can do it. Uh, you know, in the show notes here down below. So Ryan, I want to say thank you so much for being part of Codega's Codex of Curiosities. God bless you for everything you do. Thank you for 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 your show, which gets the truth out there. Good job, man. Thank you so much, Ryan. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, everyone, that was Ryan Shields. Shields, I was going to say Shields because that's what he has on his Facebook, but Ryan Shields, and also he goes by Jason Corona for his author name. Um, I want to say thank you so much for coming out and making the time for, for our viewers and listeners to listen and for Ryan as well for coming on and uh, telling us about his stories and his experiences. Um, I, I, I really like that first one he talked about of his own experience where he was being hunted by a pack of, uh, of dogmen, you know, and... That's not the first time that I heard that they're able to keep up with cars. And it's almost like they, I don't know, they, they, they you know, they, they try to catch you, but they don't as well when they're chasing a car. Like I, I've heard that before a couple of times. Really interesting. The only difference that Ryan was telling about is, you know, we, we've heard of a lot of like buff dog men, but he's saying that the ones that he has seen are a little bit skinnier. And I think maybe Josh uh, Turner from PRT, uh, um his was you know a little lankier as well so really fascinating really fascinating so again everyone i want to say thank you so much for coming out um listening being part of this journey you know to help the show i always ask you please share um comment like and uh leave a review and I, I really really enjoy it i really enjoy reading the reviews and like i always say at the end of every show keep your curiosity wandering and ensure the light stays lit. Good night. I look forward to our next adventure together as we navigate the mysteries that lie ahead. Until our paths cross again, Keep your curiosity wandering and ensure the light remains lit.